your podcast this week, you did one on the complicated ending of Bobby Bowden's life. Can you just kind of give our listeners the Reader's Digest of your take there? I thought it was really interesting. Yeah, I think that Bobby, he's a charming man, like number one. He's a charming man from an era where coaches had personalities. Like that's something that doesn't really happen right now. The job has become much more corporate at this point, and these guys just really aren't much fun in any sort of way. Bobby Bowden always was and is the rare guy who rose to prominence while doing very public losing. Like, they finished in the top five 14 times in a row, but they had five different seasons where Miami was their only regular season loss, and we saw that, right? Like, that rivalry is the premier college football rivalry of the 1990s. And so there's an affection that a lot of us have for Bobby Bowden because he just seemed like a guy that would like whoever it was that he was talking to because he's that guy and he's the guy who kind of get away with saying inappropriate things just because you like him so much. But on the way out, well, not on the way out, I don't think that's the best way to put it, but he had COVID last year and he recovered in his 90s and put out a statement that said that uh, he was glad that he recovered because he wanted to live long enough to vote for Donald Trump. And I feel like when you say something like that in public at 90 years old, you have decided how you want us to remember you. Like you wanted to make sure that you had that on the books before you died. And who am I to remember him other than the way that he wished? That's interesting, Bomani, because it makes me think about the larger conversation sports fans are having with the athletes and coaches they root for. There's more of a transparency now as a sports fan. Not only do you want your favorite coaches and players to succeed, but oftentimes you want them to feel the same as you politically, to stand up for issues that you believe in, to have investments in companies that you support. It's a lot that we put on these these men and women, and it's a different time in the sports fan, player, coach relationship. And the point you're making about Bobby Bowden, the way he wanted to be remembered – what other choice do we have as sports fans to remember him that way and then infer whatever we take away from that? So where do you think the sort of the line draws where how much we can kind of poke and pry into the personal lives and personal beliefs of these men and women? Well, I think that there's a difference between asking people to agree with you politically and preferring that those that you pay homage to not believe, support, and endorse things that are somewhere between offensive and destructive. Um, That, I don't think, is actually anything new. Uh, Think about this, case in point. I think it's in 1983 that Lou Holtz gets fired at Arkansas because he filmed a campaign ad for Jesse Helms from his office. Now, keep in mind, this is in the state of Arkansas in 1983. And that got him fired, okay? And that's not just simply because they – that is not something that was done simply because people disagree with Jesse Helms. I bet he polled very well. Arkansas was not a state, but you understand the point that I'm making, that these things have come up all the time, and we've had them come up at many times. Now, with Bowden, I am a black dude from the South, so this lands a little bit different for me because – People who grew up in the age range of generation that I did, which is coming after the beginning of some dawn of integration, you come across dudes like Bobby Bowden all the time, and they treat you really, really good. They're very nice. They charm your mama, everything else. But given your knowledge of the prevailing views of the area that you're in, you can't help but wonder to some degree what this guy maybe not thinks about you, but what he would think about you if you were not you, if that makes sense. And there's a particular sort of heartbreak that can come up when you're that person and you hear somebody endorse something or push something that is not just something you disagree with, but something that is in opposition to things that are fundamental to your being. I think throughout time and across the board, no matter who the people are, they have made decisions about who they are going to root for and not root for based on those sorts of things. And so I don't think that part is really anything new. I think the part that's new is that you have much more chatter about it on things like social media. And so you wind up hearing people say a lot of things out loud, and it will be amplified. But then in the end, if whoever that person is winds up winning, then nobody cares. We just saw this happen with Kanye West. Think about all the things you heard people say about how done they were with Kanye West. And he put all them people up in a stadium in the midst of the Delta variant to go listen to an album he wasn't even finished with. 
The album's about to come out. It's almost perfect, though, Bomani. He's waiting <laughs> for it to be just right. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.